Hello everyone, my name is Eugene and I'm the Mechatronix Application Specialist for CAD Microsolutions. In this video, I'll be showing you a demonstration of SOLIDWORKS Electrical. SOLIDWORKS Electrical is an electrical design tool which will increase your company's productivity. And I will show you how you can do that in this video. Okay. So this is how SOLIDWORKS Electrical looks like when you open it up. It has the list of projects whereby you can access. Let's open up one of the projects which I will be showing you uh, in this video. Okay. So SOLIDWORKS Electrical is a project-based solution. What I mean by project-based solution is that you can have all the documents that are involved or is connected to the project under one single project file. So whenever you open up that single project, all the reference document can be opened up and edited, viewed, or created um, on the go. Okay, so you don't have to go scrambling around looking for documents that are related to the project. All you have to do is just save all under a single project and open that project every single time. Okay, so a project can include the cover page, the conventional drawing list, the topology, whereby you can indicate the locations, the line diagram drawing, the multi-line drawing, whereby you can have both the power and the control as well as the uh, PLC symbols. You can also add externally referenced documents such as these uh, documents that are data sheets. So you don't have to Google it uh, every single time you want to know the data sheets, for example, the power rating the, or the absolute, uh, the absolute current rating of an electrical component. So this would make things so much easier, especially if you have a list of components or more than 10 or more than 50 electrical components so that you don't have to go looking it up every single time you want to find out uh, the data sheet of that single component. Okay, you, not all, you can not only add uh, externally referenced PDFs, you can also add externally referenced um, Excel worksheet as well. So for example, uh, this company that we are working with they usually insert this uh, price listing of the electrical of the electrical components so that they know beforehand uh, how much would it be maybe roughly uh, how much would it be before they actually make the order so this will then give them a rough idea on how much the whole project will cost up to so they don't have to go scrambling looking around uh, for the pricing list they can do so even while they are creating the project from scratch. Okay. So this will definitely help. The ability to add externally referenced documents will definitely help uh, the productivity of the project stage. Okay. So let's close uh, everything up and bring something that we are interested in, which is populating of the line diagram. Okay. This project is almost complete. As you can see, however, we would like to add one more motor, which is connected, which will be connected to the um, contactor relay through the terminal strip, which are then connected to the uh, circuit breaker and at the end of it, the transformer for power. SolidWorks Electrical's uh, graphical user interface is very similar to legacy software. Um, so you have the command ribbon at the top, whereby you can have easy access of the commands or functions that you want to execute. You also have the side panel on the side here whereby you can have a list of components, sheets, macros, or symbols palette. Okay. The drawing preview can be disabled or enabled if you, uh, depending on user preferences. At the bottom here, uh, you can also have the cursor location. So it will tell you exactly where the cursor is as well as certain functions such as grid on or off, snap on or off, and objects snap on or off, and such things. Okay, let's go ahead and um, insert the line diagram symbol of a motor right now. So one way to insert symbol is uh, using this toolbar on the command ribbon. It will then bring up the previously used uh, symbol for easy access. 
However, if you want to choose other symbols, you can click on the other symbols button. Okay. SOLIDWORKS Electrical comes in with a number of line diagram symbols whereby you can um, use as a template to create your own uh, line diagram symbols as well, if you want to do that. Please note that since we are on a sheet, on a drawing sheet, which has been defined as a line diagram sheet, it will only allow you to choose from a line diagram symbol library. It will not allow you to choose a multi-wire symbol because of its intelligence. Okay, So SOLIDWORKS Electrical has the intelligence to increase productivity so that you don't have to keep checking whether or not this is an appropriate symbol to be placed on this schematic type. Okay. You can also use query as well if you want to do that. Okay, the queries are especially useful in the uh, schematic symbol whereby you have thousands of symbols to choose from. I will show you that later on. So let's place a motor for now. Okay, once you place it, it will then tell you that this symbol will be associated to a new component called M5. Okay. It will then change its location to uh, other conveyors. Obviously, you can also insert new locations or sub-locations. For example, this main electrical enclosure has two sub-locations called the chassis and door. Okay. You can also change the root or, as you may call it, device designator as well. Okay. We can add manufacturer part details also. SOLIDWORKS Electrical comes with a standard manufacturer library, uh, manufacturer library which can be updated uh, through its electrical content portal whereby you have a list of uh, vendor manufacturer parts which are updated constantly by SOLIDWORKS as well as its vendors. So they have everything uh, from Alan Bradley, ABB, GE, Leroy Summer, mainly for motors, Mitsubishi Omron, Phoenix Contacts, mainly for uh, terminal strips, Rockwell Automation, Schneider, um, Lego, so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll choose a Leroy Summer motor for now. You can also use this query uh, for easy access. Note that this uh, adding of manufacturer product comes in with the four circuitries that are involved with this specific component. So it comes in with the three motor circuits as well as one ground circuit. Okay, as you can see now, it is still the states of the circuits are still blue because we have not gone into the details of um, actual wiring of the cores yet. We will do that later on in the uh, multi-wire multi -wire, uh, drawing. Now that we have placed the motor line diagram symbol, we will go ahead and draw a cable between them. Oh. Let me do that again. Okay. We can also associate this uh, cable to a cable that we have defined previously. As you can see, the cores of this cable have not been defined yet, we will do so later on in the multi-wire uh, drawing. Okay. As of now, we will just define where the cable is connected to from a line diagram standpoint. Okay. So now let's go ahead to the power diagram to perform this motor circuitry. So there is already there are already four motor circuits uh, in here, one for M1, another for M2, M3, as well as M4. We now would like to create a similar motor circuit for M5. Obviously, we can do a copy and paste of uh, this motor circuit right here. However, that's not what we want to do because it defeats the purpose of showing you how easy it is to create wiring design in SOLIDWORKS Electrical. So we can go ahead and uh, create, choose our wires that we want to place. If you would like to 
create a new wire group, we can do so as well. But SOLIDWORKS Electrical comes with a standard multi-wire uh, group. So we'll have a three-phase, one neutral wire. Place them on to this drawing. We'll then insert the corresponding symbols onto this wire. There are a few ways to insert the multi-wire symbol. One way, as you already know, is through this palette. I mean through that uh, common ribbon. As I've told you earlier, the multi-wire symbol is rather more extensive. Once again, note that it only allows you to choose multi-wire symbols. It does not allow you to choose line diagram symbols because of its intelligence of knowing what schematic type sheet it is on. Okay. So there's a list of uh, standard multi-wire symbols that you can choose from. Okay, there's everything from relay coil to normally open contacts to connectors to circuit breaker symbols, so on and so forth. Okay. You also have switches as well, circuit breakers, relay coils, and all that. Once again, you can use the classification to stream through these um, symbols easily. You can also use the filter as well. Okay. So now we would like to add the circuit breaker. Need to a thermal circuit breaker. Use a three pole one and place it onto here. We will associate this to the circuit breaker that is already in the line diagram drawing. So it will then tell you that this symbol will be associated to the selected component called Q4. If you go to the manufacturer parts and circuits, you see that the details as well as the circuitry that is involved will be populated right away based on what you have already initialized in the line diagram drawing. You can uh, jump from here to the um, its corresponding line diagram symbol, simply using the go to function. Okay, you can do it back and forth as well. Okay. We'll now the the second method to place a uh, symbol is using the symbols palette right here, whereby you can find for the symbol using a query can also use this palette whereby you can add symbols however you want. Okay. So it's pretty similar like an artist palette. Okay, all you gotta do is just drag and drop and then define what the mark is or how you want to associate this symbol to. Okay. Let's associate it to K4. Once again, it brings in the manufacturer details and the circuitry that is involved. You can also see that there's a corresponding relay coil which has been defined in this project and you can see where it is located in the drawing sheet of the project. Okay. Click on OK for now. And we'll do a copy and paste to show you how easy it is to perform the Windows based uh, keyboard shortcut. So note that when you do a copy and paste, it does not copy and paste the mark of M3 because otherwise it would then create duplicate mark, right? So SolidWorks Electrical comes in with that ability to distinguish the what marks are already has already been used and it would then create a new mark to avoid any discrepancies. So you see that even though you do a copy and paste, M9 has been defined as the M3. However, it brings in all the manufacturer details that which is what you want. Okay, let's now uh, associate this motor to M5, which was the uh, motor that was previously inserted in the line diagram symbol. Okay, see that it brings in all the circuitry that is involved. Note that previously was uh, the state of the circuits were blue. Now it has been changed to green deeming that it has already been fulfilled by the schematic drawing. I mean the multi-wire multi uh, schematic drawing. Okay. We'll now add the terminals. 
okay um, and then associate it to x1 okay. now we can also add uh, manufacturer details to the terminals as well it will add one manufacturer part to three terminals we'll add one more uh, which is a unique one to another part another terminal last terminal okay remember the w10 cable which we inserted in the light diagram symbol we would now like to associate the cores uh, of that w10 cable with this uh, cores right here so these four cores we would like to put them in to w10 okay you can do that simply by selecting associate cable cores choose the cable that we want select the cores and associate them easy as that okay so now if uh, what's the conventional way to uh, create a terminal strip drawing of w of x1 now that we have done the electrical uh, design will be to manually uh, manually write down the from to list of the terminal strip in SOLIDWORKS Electrical, you can automate this process using a single click. Okay, simply a right click, draw X1 terminal strip. And if you go to the sheet, you see that the terminal strip drawing will be created right away based on the schematic logical connections. So you would have the connections, the cable W6 that connects it from to to the water symbol, right? So this makes everything easy because it comes in with the cores as well as the cable and the cable details as well. Obviously, uh, SOLIDWORKS Electrical allows you to also change this uh, terminal strip properties as well. If you want to see a different layout, you can change the terminal width, the terminal height, the cable, the wire length, the bridges if you want it to be visible, uh, the cable position as well as a destination like how wide you want the symbol to be and what kind of symbols you want it to appear whether it's a line diagram symbol or a schematic symbol or a multi-wire line multi-wire schematic symbol okay so you have these kind of flexibility in terms of uh, managing your terminal strip drawings okay all right so let me close this uh, terminal strip drawing right now so we are done with this uh, power uh, symbol except for the actual power which is the transformer circuit right we have all the motor circuits but there's no power so we like to insert a power uh, circuit here i'd like to introduce you to something called uh, snippets or oh, not not snippets but macros for design reuse okay so if you take a look at another project, um, you see that there's a transformer circuit already. We would like to use this in that project which we were working on previously. So we can do that simply by dragging and dropping to the demo macro. Okay, we can then name it, click on OK. We can then close this uh, schematic. And go back to our previously used, uh, previously open project, and simply drag and drop the copied uh, circuitry. So this uh, circuitry, uh, or we call it macro, can be used for any project. So it's like you're saving a sub circuit into your library, whereby you can reuse this uh, sub circuit. In all your other projects so this will make things easier especially when you're dealing with uh, what we call golden schematics whereby we have already defined a schematic which is working perfectly fine and you want to keep recreating this and using this uh, as much as you want instead of creating everything from scratch okay it'll then tell you that you will create a new you can create new marks for the component for the potential or so on and so forth okay so let's rename this uh, to associate it to the line diagram symbol which we already have, which is Q6. And T1. Okay. 
right? All right, so we have the transformer circuit, we have the motor circuits. Now we are all almost done. Okay. If you are to open up sheet 07, you see that there's a PLC symbol right here. And you have the, the blue line as well as the green line or the neutral line. The, these two lines here, which, will, which we would like to connect to these two lines over here from the transformer. So we have something called cross-referencing or origin destination in here. I'm sorry, not cross-referencing, but origin destination. So we would like to connect this blue line to this blue line here. You can use a single insertion, choose the origin. Now we will only allow me to choose the blue line and not the green line. Okay, so SOLIDWORKS Electrical comes in with the intelligence to recognize uh, the equipotential of the, the wires and make sure that you choose the origin destination of the same equipotential wires. Okay, this will avoid any unnecessary uh, errors. Right? I will explain to you what this 071 means later on. Okay, so origin destination once again. Once you're done, close this window. So 071 basically means that this goes to 07, sheet 07, row number one. So as you can see right now, you don't see the rows uh, because this sheet template does not come with any rows. So if you like to change the sheet template, all we got to do is go to properties and change it to the sheet template that we want. Okay, we'll choose probably B with rows. Click on OK. There you go. You have the rows. And you have the sheet 07. Okay, you can also do a go to of the origin from the origin. So this will allow you to simply jump or go to the origin and to the destination. You can do also do it vice versa as well from to the origin. Okay. All right. So now that the wires are already done. The schematics are done. The only thing that is missing are the wire numbers. Okay, SolidWorks Electrical comes in with an automated process of numbering the wires. So with a single click, it will number all the wires accordingly. Okay, you can also specify the formula of the uh, wire drawings that you want. So if you go to wire styles, if you right click any of the sorry, if you right click any of the wires, you see that. You can define the formula however you want. You can define it so that it, the sheet number appears along with the uh, equipotential or the wire mark, so on and so forth. Okay, so you can have customization of how you want to see the wire numbers. Okay. If I want to choose this, uh, if I want to choose that, and you can definitely uh, change the wiring formula however you wish. Okay, I will not do that for now because of the time frame that we have. All right. So if you have to generate the reports for now, uh, you can see that you can generate a drawing list report. You can also generate a list of wire by style, the bill of materials, whether you can group them. Uh, let's generate this tree for now. Okay. I also have a PLC input output as well. So as you can see, the list of wires, uh, you have the origin, the destination, the from to list, as well as the wire number and the length. Okay, the section, uh, cross section area is left as blank because we have not defined any cross section diameter yet. Our library is not complete. So if we'd like to add a section uh, section uh, diameter, we can do so. It accepts both AWG standard, MM square standard, and also MCM standard. So let's choose AWG and put that 22 for one of the wires. And go back to our reports. You see that some of them has been populated with 22 AWG. So you can make sure that your library is always uh, 
populated with all its necessary parameters and then you can work it out from there so that it's always an automated process when it comes to electrical design okay now the only thing missing is the length okay we will do that later on in the 3d uh, mode all right you also have the bill of materials whereby you can group them according to uh, the manufacturer or according to the part that you want okay you can also have a PLC input or output list if you have uh, defined it properly. Okay, you can also do a drawing list, which is pretty typical in an electrical design. Okay. Oh, I also want to show you that you can uh, generate the drawings so that it will be placed into your project. Okay. Let's generate all of them. You can also export it in the form of Excel or TXD as well. Right, so now we have done that, if you go here into the list of wires, you see that it has been compiled and placed into your project itself. So every time you open up this project, this whole uh, drawing reports will be populated. Okay, now let's go ahead and update this length. We will go into the 3D mode of SOLIDWORKS Electrical. Okay. Because of the collaborative uh, environment, it would allow you to, the po to point to a same local machine uh, uh, through a SQL server, whereby it will make sure that the database as well as the project database are all always maintained between several users. So you can have multi-users working on the same project in SOLIDWORKS Electrical. So both the Electrical 2D, uh, which are mainly the electrical designers or electrical engineers, can work together with the mechanical electrical mechanical engineers or mechanical designers. So you can work on both electrical 2D side of the project as well as electrical 3D side of the project at the same time because of this collaborative server tool. Okay. So let's open up that project. As you can see, the red uh, line basically means that it is open by another project uh, by another user okay, it will tell you that it is currently open by this user and let's open it so let's open the uh, solidworks even from this solidworks electrically electrical 3d side you can also see a preview of the of the drawings that you have made okay Let's open up the assembly, the SOLIDWORKS assembly. Alright, so this is the almost complete uh, SOLIDWORKS electrical assembly that we have populated. Some of them are electrical components, some of them are not. You can have a mixture of uh, electrical and non-electrical components into an assembly as well. You just got to make sure that there's an association that has been made properly between the electrical components and its associated 3D model in the assembly uh, file. Okay. So let me just uh, go to the motor M5 uh, area. So this is uh, a part for now, which is not yet electrical. We can go to the electrical here. Remember the M5, which we inserted in both the line diagram as well as the schematic drawing? We would like to associate this to this uh, motor right here. So all we gotta do is right click, associate, click on this part, and click on OK. Right, so this whole component or this whole part will then be associated to M5 right away. Okay. Let's look at the main electrical enclosure now so that we can uh, properly place the electrical components and then route the wires. Okay. If you take a look at the electrical panel, you can hide the already inserted components so that 
you don't have a cluster of components ready to be placed. As you can see, the previously not empty L4 uh, previously contained M5 has now been emptied because we recently associated to the 3D part and this assembly. Okay. We can place multiple items by simply selecting all of them. Click on insert. We can also define the insertion order. For example, if we want T1 to be in the middle, we can do so. And then we can place uh, them in groups. So we'll place one of them, which has been mated to the DIN rail. So you can use mate references to your own advantage. So by using that, all you have to do is just place it on the DIN rail and you'll make sure that it has been mated properly onto the DIN rail itself. You can also define the spacing between uh, the components. Let's just say we want to do it for 12.7 mm, which is about half an inch. Between another, between one another. Okay, so you'll place the components one by one. You can also specify whether you want to insert it to your left or to your right. Okay, so all these components has been placed. Now, when you move one component, everything will move one together. As you can see, even though if I move uh, top to bottom, it will not move top to bottom because it has been securely attached to the DIN rail using the mate references uh, capability of SOLIDWORKS Electrical. Okay, we can also place uh, the terminals. Let me refresh the uh, height already inserted. As you can see, only X2 and X1 are available. Let's insert X2 terminals for now. Place them onto the DIN rail itself. Once again, the mate references are to our advantage. We can define the spacing as well as the insertion order. I mean the insertion uh, direction. Okay. Once we have done that, you see that everything else is automated. We can then go ahead and route the wires for them. Let's select these terminals to be routed. We can route for all components or we can route for only certain selected components. We can also define the spacing between the wires and we can choose whether we want it to have splines or strictly lines. Okay, we can also specify whether we want it to have a 3D sketch or a real um, 3D body sketch of the component. Of the wire, sorry. Okay, so it will then uh, figure out the best route uh, to go to. You can specify the routing path as well uh, through a 3D sketch body so that you'll make sure that you'll always follow the path that you have specified through that 3D sketch path. There's also something called segregation tool. Uh, so what segregation tool is good for is, for example, if you want uh, a certain high voltage wire to avoid a certain duct, you can specify the group of wire that you want it to avoid that duct and so it will not be routed across that duct itself. So that comes in handy especially for high voltage uh, wires. So what it does is it will route the wires also based on the schematics that you have recently um, made up on the uh, SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2D side of things. So once you have done that, as you can see, the the wire colors, as well as its appropriate uh, connections, uh, will then be made. 
I believe I set the parameters incorrectly. That's why it was taking so much time. It was uh, routing all the components. That's why it took quite a bit of time. It has to route through all the components, has to specify the segregation uh, parameters as well as its uh, colors that are defined based on the electrical schematics. Okay, so all these uh, colors are defined in the electrical schematic itself, whereby, as you can see in the power, in the properties, you can define the wire color and things like that. Okay, so now that you have done uh, this wiring in electrical 3D, you can go ahead and redo your reports to make sure that the proper length has been. Uh, populated. So as you can see, the lengths are all then updated accordingly. Okay, these are in inches. If you want to change that to millimeters, you can obviously specify that in your columns. Okay, you can change the wiring formula to length, uh, etc., to change it to millimeters. Okay, you can also regenerate the drawings in Excel or TXT report format. Okay. Alright, so some additional notes that I would like to point out. You can also do ductile percentage calculation in SOLIDWORKS Electrical. For example, if you want to know how much is this duct fill, you can do so in uh, this tool. You can also do some other tools like I've mentioned, the segregation of wires. and You can create your own 3D routing path as well. And you can do a 2D drawing from this 3D assembly as well, if you want to do that. Okay. So, oh, one last thing that I want to show. You can also create a DWG uh, file or an PDF file as well. Or you can also import DWG file, the legacy files. Okay, thank you very much. And... Thank you for watching this video.